Okay, hi, welcome to Physics with London and Cassidy. Um, sorry, Cassidy, I may do look like a homeless man with long hair, but um, today we're going to be talking about lenses and optics. Um, my theme song for this video is Party in the USA, because physics is a party. So the first thing we're going to talk about in optics is how to draw lens and mirror ray diagrams. Each diagram has three rays. And so first we're going to start with concave mirror diagrams. So the first ray, you're going to start with having it parallel to the axes and you're going to draw it straight to the mirror. Then it's going to reflect off of the mirror through the focal point. So that's the first ray, and then the second ray is going to go through the focal point first. And then reflect back parallel. So those are the first two rays, ray one and ray two. And then the third ray has to do with the center of curvature, which is basically double the focal point and it's just going to go straight through that. And, as you can see, they all intersect at the same point, which is where the image for this mirror will be created. It's right there, so that's the image. Next we'll be doing a convex mirror diagram. This one differs slightly from the concave one. So, beginning with the first ray, it is going to travel parallel to the axes, and once it hits the mirror, it's going to reflect back from the focal point. So you want to position your ruler crossing through the focal point, but the real ray will go this way. And you have to draw a dotted line back through the focal point, because that shows the direction in which it was going. So then the next ray is going to go toward the focal point from the object. But when it gets to the mirror, instead it's going to reflect back parallel to the x-axis. And since it's going parallel, you want to do the same thing and draw a dotted line. And then the third ray is going to go toward the center of curvature and when it gets to the mirror you basically leave it alone and then draw the dotted line through and as you can see all of the rays intersect at that one point on the other side of the mirror making it a virtual image which is why we did the lines as dotted So now we're going to move on to lens diagram, starting with the concave lens diagram. And so what you want to do is you want to start your first ray parallel, like we've been doing. And you're going to go toward the center of the lens, where you see that vertex is. And from here, the ray is going to refract off the lens from the focal point. So it's going to be real on this side. And then you're going to dot it on this side to signify that it's virtual over here. And so the next ray is going to go toward the focal point on the other side of the lens from the top of the object. And same thing, go toward the center of the lens and then it will refract off parallel and continue the dotted line on the other side to signify where it was. And then the third ray, so that's ray one, ray two. The third ray is super easy. All you have to do is go straight through the center of the lens. That's your third ray. And as you can see, they all intersect here, which means that the image will be formed there. Finally, 
we're going to be doing the convex lens diagram. This one's the easiest in my opinion. So you're going to start off, same as always, beginning with the first ray going parallel to the x-axis. And when it hits the center of the lens, it's going to refract through the focus point on the other side. Okay, sweet. Now that I fixed that, the second ray is going to be going straight through the vertex of the lens. We're going to make the ruler long enough this time. And I'm just going to continue the ray until you watch it intersect with this one. <laughs> well, let's just lengthen this one. <laughs> Okay, so as you can see, that's ray one, that's ray two. And then the third ray is going to be going through the focal point on this side. And when it hits the center of the lens, it is going to refract parallel. And as you can see, they all intersect over here at this point, creating the image over here. Alrighty, I'm gonna talk about refraction. Um, refraction is when a light ray is passed through one medium and into another, and these always have different densities. Uh, the first medium is gonna be a vacuum. And a vacuum, uh, we're not talking about the kind that you uh, vacuum with. It's just a space with no air, no pressure, absolutely nothing in it. And this is where light travels the fastest at the speed of light, uh, 3 times 10 to the 8th. And my second medium is going to be water. And I'll even make it look like water. And because it's water, I have to draw a little Nemo. And there's Nemo. All right. Okay. Um, first, I'm gonna draw the normal line, and this is perpendicular to where the two mediums meet. Um, so let's say we have a light ray coming through the vacuum. Um, where it first hits, this is the angle of incidence, or theta one. And when it hits the water, it's gonna be going slower and it's going to change directions. Uh, when you're going from a less dense substance to a more dense substance, um, the light ray is going to slow down and it's also going to refract uh, towards the normal instead of away from the normal line. Um, so this will be smaller and this is theta 2 or the angle of refraction. Um, the each, like the light ray when it goes to the first and the second is obviously going to have different velocities. This is going to be going the speed of light because it's in a vacuum. And this is going to be going a lot slower. Um, and the relationship between these two is in uh, Snell's Law. Uh, this is one that we always use. It shows the relationship between the index of refraction uh, and the angle of incidence and angle of refraction. And, um... We can also calculate the index of refraction itself for different mediums uh, using the speed of light and the velocity of the light in that medium. Um, another way that you can, I hope you can see this, kind of think about this is let's say you have a car and here's a road that's paved and here's some mud and let's say the car is driving down the road Oh, I have to draw a car. Okay, uh, at some point, the car is going to be passing into the mud. I'm sorry, this is terrible. Uh, and this one wheel is just going to be in the mud. So uh, it, that wheel is going to be stuck. It's not really going to be able to move. And these other wheels will still be moving at full speed because they're still on a paved road. Um, so because of that, all of these wheels are going to turn the car that way uh, towards the normal and it's, the angle is going to be smaller and that's kind of how 
you can think about um, how the angle moves. Also, if we reversed this and we made this the angle of incidence and that the angle of refraction going out, um, when light goes through a more dense substance into a less dense substance, it's going to refract away from the normal um, and get faster. And, uh, yeah. Alrighty, lastly I'm going to be talking about um, constructive and destructive interference in waves. So when, let's say these two waves are coming towards each other, the blue wave and the purple wave, um, when they overlap, uh, if they overlap so that the crests of the waves and the troughs of the waves uh, are in the same spot, they don't have to overlap perfectly, they don't have to have the same amplitudes. In this case they do, they both just have an amplitude of positive one. Um, then the amplitudes of the waves are going to add, and that is constructive interference. And in this case, the amplitudes would double. Um, that doesn't always happen, though. Uh, constructive interference is just when they, uh, the crests and the troughs align, but they don't have to be the same amplitude. In this case, the purple wave has an amplitude of positive 2, the blue one has an amplitude of positive 1, and so the wave that comes out of them constructively interfering has an amplitude of positive 3. And then for destructive interference, um, the crests of one wave and the troughs of the other wave, they align. So what happens is they destructively interfere and in this case they cancel each other out and you get no wave. Okay, lastly I'm going to talk a little bit about Young's double slit experiment. Um, I pre-drew this picture and it's kind of free-handed, so uh, I'm going to still try to explain it. Um, so in this experiment, uh, light is shined through uh, these two slits and the experiment was to see how the light came through. You'd expect the light to just come straight through the two slits and onto the surface, but um, the light waves interfere and it creates kind of a different appearance on the surface. So I never knew this before, but um, right here, this is just a different way of drawing the wave so that you can see it better, like to show this experiment. Um, the lines of the wave show the crests of the wave, and in between these lines is the troughs of the wave. And if this was a perfectly drawn picture, the distance between the waves would be the wavelength of your wave. Um, so, uh, the light, when it comes through these two slits, it's going to come out like this, um, all the way to the other side, if you can kind of see the difference, and it does that for both of them. And uh, everywhere that the two waves uh, constructively interfere is where they connect um, those blue dots. And everywhere that they constructively interfere, you'll have a bright spot over on the other side. And everywhere in between where you have uh, the crests and the troughs lining up, it's destructive interference and they'll cancel each other out, maybe not completely all the time, and you'll get either no brightness or just a little bit of brightness. Um, and over here, this uh, wave shows the brightness of the light that comes out on the other side. This picture isn't drawn perfectly, but really in the center of these two slits, these should go straight and you get the brightest light right here. Um, and that is why the amplitude is higher. And then as you go out down the wave, right here is where it constructively interferes and there's no brightness. Um, and then it gets brighter and it constructively interferes and you have brightness. And then it destructively interferes and you have no brightness. So the last thing we're going to do is an example of a lens problem. So this problem says, a thin double convex lens of focal length f equals 15 centimeters is located at the origin of the x-axis, as shown above. An object of height 8 centimeters is placed 45 centimeters to the left of the lens. So, beginning with part A, on the figure below, draw a ray diagram to show the formation of the image by the lens. Clearly show the principal rays. So the principal rays are the three lenses that we had practiced drawing before. So, beginning with the first one, going to start 
it from the top of the image, the object going parallel to the axes. And then, oh, we should probably label the focal points. So this will be a focal point on that side, and this will be a focal point on that side. So we're going to go through F2 on this side. And then the next ray is going to go straight through the vertex right there of the lens from the top of the object. And then the third ray is going to go through the focal point one on this side from the top of the object. And when it hits the lens, it's going to go parallel. And as you can see, the image is formed right there. And those are our principal rays for part A. Now we're going to move on to the first part of B. And it asks you to calculate the position of the image formed by the lens. So to do this, we're going to use the main formula, which is 1 over DO plus 1 over DI equals 1 over F. And when we're looking at the problem, we can see that they give us F and they also give us DO. And so what we're going to be solving for is DI. So simply you plug in the numbers, DO is 45, DI we do not know, and then F is 15. So here we can rearrange this to give us 1 over DI equals 1 over 15 minus 1 over 45. And so now, we can get our calculators and figure out that 1 over 15 minus 1 over 45 is equal to 2 over 45. So 1 over di equals 2 over 45. And then we want to inverse them both. So we'll have, when we flip that, we'll have di is equal to 45 over 2 and 45 over 2 is 22.5 centimeters is the image distance. For the second part of question B, it asks you to calculate the size of the image formed by the lens. And so for this, we're going to be using the magnification formula, which is M equals HI over HO, which is image, image height over image or object height, equals di, negative DI over DO. And so we can use this relationship because they give us the object height. We just calculated the image height up here, and we know the object distance. And so we can easily solve for HI. So you're going to set this up by doing HI over 8 equals negative 22.5, because it's negative dis uh, image distance, over 45. And from here, we're going to cross multiply to get negative 180 equals 45 HI. And to get HI alone, you're going to divide the 45 out. And you will be left with HI is equal to negative 4 centimeters. And for part C, the final part of this problem, it asks you to describe briefly what would happen to the image formed by the lens if the top half of the lens were blocked so that no light could pass through. Well, considering the fact that the rays cross at the same point, all that will happen if the top half of the lens were covered is that less light would come through. And basically, it would form the exact same image, except less bright. And so, to explain that, all you'd have to write is the fact that since the rays cross at the same point, but there is less light going through the lens, it would cause 
or result in. The same image. Just less bright. <laughs>